Shalom, Yashallah, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yasharallah. Kol Haloyim La Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Harakha Kodash. We're blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwa. That's keeping the faith in the work. Shall keep at it. It's your brother Abiah coming at you with more precepts. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 13, and verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against power to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. All right. This devil has been given authority over the world, according to the book of Job 9.24. And in this devil's authority, he's been speaking some real deal blasphemous things. The latest thing in his uh, belt is the most high is not a man. Now he's a they or them. All right? And I'm going to show you the real deal blasphemy in that. It's blasphemy in itself. But I'm going to show you the real deal blasphemy of it. All right? So, just a lot, one second. Let this video play and I'll be back. Next tonight, let us pray our father, sorry, not anymore, our non-gendered parent who art in heaven. That sound right to you? In a break with centuries of tradition, the Church of England's debating whether to stop referring to God as a he by introducing gender-neutral pronouns in prayers and hymns. Well, I'm joined by Christian activist and author Simon Hill and U.S. conservative talk radio host Ben Ferguson. So Ben Ferguson, I'd imagine when you heard about this, the steam began to uh, rage out of your ears. What is your view of a gender-neutral God? Yeah. Congratulations to the church for doing everything possible to become completely irrelevant from society with this woke BS. It, it's embarrassing that they can't go back and look at what Scripture says and look at certain things like our Father who art in heaven and then sit there and think, Wow, of all the problems that people have in the world that we can be helping people with poverty uh, and with children and with orphans and with people that are starving around the world, let's go back in and rewrite this so that we don't offend anybody. Guess what? The scriptures are offensive to people that sin. The scriptures are offensive to Christians because it is about right and wrong. There are Now, I give, but it is the truth. The word one meant to be cuddling for everybody it wasn't meant to be comforting for everybody all you gotta do is read it and you'll see that if it wasn't if it wasn't so there would be no mention of a two-third there would be no mention of the day of the lord there would be no mention of death at all it would just all be love like christianity claims the most high is all love it's all good it's all sweet cupcakes and candies and, and balloons but it ain't written that way. It's supposed to be offensive. Scripture says the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Right? It cuts. It's supposed to hurt. Right? How else do you heal? How else do you repent or make things or turn around? Or how do you make things right within yourself if you can't see the wrong? Are people that are always going to be offended by the Bible and to try to take the offensiveness out of it and give everybody a kumbaya warm hug is a disaster for the church. Anyone that's doing this, in my opinion, should not be in a position of leadership of the church and they should be fired immediately for trying it. OK, uh, Simon Hill, your response to that. 
Well, I think, um, with all respect to Ben, he's right that the church should be concerned about poverty, about the needs of children. Uh, the church could get a lot more active in supporting marginalised people. But this isn't the Church of England considering a massive change. This is just a part of the Church of England having a discussion about possibly allowing uh, some variety in worship in the way God is referred to. And actually, there's nothing new about it. God is not literally male or literally sure female. It's new. God That's doesn't what have we're talking genitals about. or chromosomes. Um, God, you're, you're not you're suggesting, Ben, are you, that, that God, God is actually not literally a male. male? Like, are you, are you... Okay, let me ask you a question. Am I... I ain't finna go on to a line of questioning that... Eh, we can do it out. But you heard what Buddy said. God is not literally a male. and No, nah, according to the word, he is. Right? Let's go to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. Right? Matter of fact, let me, let me start it up. Right? I'm going to start from the top. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto Yahweh. And spake, saying, I will sing unto Yahweh, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Yahweh is my strength and song, right? and he has become my salvation. He is my power. Notice, he keeps getting repeated. Not they or her. He keeps getting repeated. He is my power, and I will prepare him. And habitation, my father's power, and I will exalt him. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. All right? Simple as that. But let's go further, man. Numbers. Numbers 23. And verse 19. Power is not a man that he should lie. Right? Meaning when the most high's word is true. If he say something gonna come to pass, it's gonna come to pass. If he say it's not, it's not. But he's a man that he should not lie. Or he's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good. Right? This devil real life, man, got <laughs> onto my the audacity, man, of, of this devil to speak how he speak. Right? And it's because the most high has turned away from his people for so long and is allowing wickedness to happen on this earth for the time being. Right? But it's gonna come a point in time. When the Most High going to let the world know exactly who he is and who his people is. Right. Um, but speaking of the. Um, like I said, I'm going to show you why. That's one thing to say that the Most High is just that, that and the third. But it's a reason why they saying it. And I'm going to show you why. First, I want to get the scripture right quick. The book of Second Corinthians. Chapter 4 and verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of, of Hamashiach, who is the image of power, should shine unto them. Now we understand that the Most High gave power to the wicked, who is Esau Edom, according to the book of Malachi. Right? But that devil doesn't serve Yahweh. That devil serves a spiritual demon, a spiritual being, right? By the name of Hashatan, which is the adversary. Right? I'm going to show you this dude.
Okay, so this is an artist's depiction of who they serve. Right? Where they get the depiction from, I don't know. But this is who they depicted. Right? Notice that it's the form of a man with the head and hind parts of a goat with breasts like a woman, right? And wings of an eagle, right? Notice the posture of the hands. And if you pull up a, a, a picture, matter of fact, let me see, let's see right quick. You see it? Notice the, the, the hand posturings of who they call Jesus. And notice the hand posturings of who they call, well, this is called the Baphomet, but it's a basically an a art, artistic rendering of the spiritual demon Satan. You see it? Like right here. And right here. It's the same thing. Right? The God of this world. Notice how they try to depict who they call Jesus as being. He's a man, but he has feminine ways. He's meek. Right? Tender. He wouldn't turn up on the fly. That's who they serve. Right? And that's why they speaking how they speaking right now. Right? And that's also why the most high getting ready to bam this place all the way up. He already letting loose the plagues. They already being let loose. Right? Like I said, man, the most high gonna let these folk know exactly who he is and who his people are. Let me go to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 16 and verse 14. Mm. Matter of fact, Jeremiah 16 and 13. Therefore, will I cast you out of this land, right, out of Jerusalem, into a land that ye know not, right? Neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, while I will not show you favor. <laughs> what that sound like? It says, Therefore, behold, the days come, said Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Yasharala out of the land of Egypt. But Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. Right? The land of, of the north, where Judah and Israel are oppressed together. The land of the north, right, where the kings of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of his fornication. The land of the north, right, and from all the lands, whether he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land, Jerusalem, that I gave unto their fathers, right? Simple as that, man. Soon as the Most High say, that's it, then guess what? That's it. And we can see it all happening as we speak. Right? So, and man, Most High willing, man, he go ahead and make a written, make an end to all of this, man. Right? For real, for real. That's what we pray for. We pray for salvation and we pray for the destruction of Babylon. Right? So with that, how about Shimmy How Shira Tazadi's precepts in this video were edifying? Call Holoyim La, Yahawa, Bahashim Yahawa Shai, Bahashim Harakha Kodash, Shalom Yashala.